And before this video begins, I would just like to tell you that I have a P.O. box until early December. So if you want to send me any like fan mail or like jokey things for me to open in Patreon videos or if I get enough in an actual video on the main channel, just send it to this address and yeah, just thought I'd let you know. Anyway, on with the video. I'd like to give a special shout out to my Asbantium level patron, Fallon Cortez. <laughs> So, an era of Doctor Who has ended, meaning the next year will be full of rampant speculation, discussion, and teases of the new era to come. This is always common between periods of the show, because it feels like possibilities are endless and anything can happen. But this time, Doctor Who is in the curious position of a former showrunner returning and taking over once again. And whilst this is understandably being celebrated and eagerly anticipated by fans, I think a lot of people are getting ahead of themselves and forgetting about some of the clear pitfalls and red flags that seem to be cropping up around this new start. And yes, I can already hear the angry typing of fans telling me I'm being too critical and pessimistic. And yeah, I understand that. But this isn't some kind of blind rant. I'm simply concerned about the direction the show currently seems to be heading towards. So at least hear me out before you start dogpiling me on Twitter. Unless you've been living under a rock recently, you will know about the plethora of issues that have been plaguing Doctor Who over the past few years. Ever since the middle of the Stephen Moffat era, ratings have been trending downwards, and mainstream interest in the show has pretty much hit rock bottom. The fanbase has been eating itself alive, the writing has been widely criticised, and it just feels like nobody cares about Doctor Who anymore. Former showrunner Chris Chibnall has even gone on record to state that, for a while, he believed his final episode, Power of the Doctor, would be the last ever episode of Doctor Who, because the show seemed to be heading towards cancellation or hiatus territory. But on one fateful day in September 2021, it was announced that former showrunner Russell T Davis would be returning to take control of the show once more. This was met with unanimous praise and celebration, because Davis is one of the most well regarded and liked producers of Doctor Who's long history, so pretty much everyone was optimistic. But even though I was elated too, I recall having a sense of trepidation towards the idea, because I was worried about the show relying on its past and proven success, playing things too safe rather than trying to expand its horizons. I even joked saying that Davis better not bring David Tennant back as the Doctor, and, well, look what happened. So, at the end of Power of the Doctor, there was the shocking regeneration of Jodie Whittaker into David Tennant, who had already played the Doctor from 2005 to 2010, essentially becoming the modern face of the show and defining an era. In fact, a lot of people straight up stopped watching Doctor Who after he and Russell T Davis left with the end of time. Sure, the Smith era remained popular, but it was never the consistent cultural juggernaut of the Davis and Tennant eras. So it's safe to say that the announcement of the pair returning to Doctor Who has already drummed up a lot of interest and appealed to a lot of lapsed viewers. But the question is, what happens when David Tennant leaves again? There is no guarantee that all those viewers will still stick around, especially when Davis also decides to move on once again. That's the danger of an approach like this, because the show eventually becomes reliant on appealing to an audience they could easily lose based on just one or two people leaving the show. Ever since 2010, it has become clear that a large percentage of the audience were simply David Tennant fans. So ideally, they're not really the kind of crowd the show should start catering itself to. When the second Russell T Davis era was announced, it seemed like a golden opportunity to use the writer's name to reignite interest in the show and build a platform for bold new changes people would be more agreeable to and gel with easier. And yeah, this is a great idea. You use the short-term nostalgia of the returning showrunner to renew public interest, which then allows Shooty Gatwa's incarnation to start off strong with good ratings and a lot of goodwill from fans who can trust Davis to write good Doctor Who. It's especially prevalent given the dramatically lowered expectations of the Chibnall era. Davis and Gatwa 
Aqua would have been handed success on a silver platter. Literally anything they do would have been seen as a stark improvement on what came before it, and lead to instant success and a boost in viewership and audience reception, especially because of natural interest in the 13th Doctor's regeneration. But it seems as though Russell didn't believe the nostalgic appeal of his name alone would be good enough for the show, so he's bringing back his iconic Doctor too. And like I said, it's a good idea to appeal to nostalgia temporarily to repair that disillusioned fanbase and build a platform. But by going down this route of inserting David Tennant in between Whitaker and Gatwa, it adds an extreme amount of pressure on Gatwa to succeed because he now has to follow on from the most popular actor to ever play the Doctor. The first time Tennant left, the fanbase was pretty reluctant to accept anyone else, and it was only due to the excellent writing and performance of the 11th Doctor that people grew to like Matt Smith in the role. Now Davis has created the exact same scenario for Gatwa. He has a much harder job now than he otherwise would have had, and it's an unnecessary headache for the show to deal with, because a lot of people will once again start moaning that they want David Tennant back, again. As stated, the trilogy of 2023 specials are bringing back David Tennant in the lead role as a fully fledged incarnation of the Doctor. He's not the Degeneration Doctor or another similar term like the War Doctor or the Fugitive Doctors. David Tennant is the 14th Doctor. We're also getting the returns of Catherine Tate as Donna, Donna's family, the Celestial Toymaker, and even obscure expanded media character Beep the Meep. Oh, and there has also been speculation of a Mel Bush return. Obviously I trust Davis to combine all these elements into very good episodes, but David Tennant being the actual 14th Doctor feels like a short-sighted move, even if the narrative is all about him trying to work out who he is, like many leaks suggest. Nothing we've seen so far indicates the aim to secure the future of the franchise and guarantee its success for years to come. It very much comes across as the BBC saying, let's just go back to what we already know works. Davis is bringing back most of the people he originally worked with on his era of the show, such as Julie Gardner, Jane Tranter and Phil Collinson. It's gone so far that people are even expecting Murray Gold to return as a composer. It feels like they're trying to replicate the production staff of what's commonly seen as Doctor Who's golden era as if they're hitting a reset button. This even extends to really basic things, such as the usage of music in a video of Gatwa explaining Doctor Who. And I know this part might sound like a nitpick or a reach, but it's simply indicative of the wider problem. The background music of the video is the Series 4 theme music, which seems fine on its own, sure, but almost all the images shown are purely from the Davis era. It almost creates an impression of this new era completely disregarding the Moffat and Chibnall eras as if it's still 2009 and the end of time hasn't happened yet. It's frankly a bit bizarre. The erasure of the two eras in between has also been shown with an almost overnight change of branding and marketing. Pretty much immediately after the end of Power of the Doctor, the new logo was revealed and implemented, along with a bunch of interviews and pieces of marketing about the next era. Obviously it's capitalising upon the momentum gained within the episode to continue garnering interest, but the corpse of the Chimnal era was still warm. Fans never had a chance to process that climactic episode. From the preview trailer to all the marketing materials, it felt like the show is already pivoting its entire focus towards episodes that won't even come out for another year. It's such a strange approach, and almost like an erasure of the Chibnall era, barely even acknowledging its existence. Hell, it was already an issue going into Power of the Doctor, because we knew more about the 60th anniversary than we did about the 13th Doctor's final episode. This all made Power of the Doctor feel almost like a formality, because it was already being overshadowed, so to then double down on that overshadowing is a very questionable choice. Let's return to the nostalgia issue. A lot of big franchises these days are turning to nostalgia and so-called member berries to appeal to fans, rather than committing to original and creative ideas. Instead, it's all about safety and familiarity. Star Trek has a three season show featuring everyone from the next generation, but written atrociously. Star Wars is constantly leaning into nostalgic cameos and settings with movies and shows like Rogue One, The Bad Batch and Kenobi. Doctor Who feels like it's facing 
the risk of following down the same path, which might trap it in a greatest hits act for years to come and ultimately hurt the show's legacy in the long run. Even the new logo is simply an updated version of the 70s Tom Baker logo, suggesting further reliance on the past. And yes, I know it's diamond for the diamond anniversary, but they also brought back the same logo for the 30th anniversary, and last I checked, that wasn't a diamond anniversary. Look, I understand this heavily nostalgic approach is due to the 60th anniversary of Doctor Who, but that just highlights the issues of starting an entire new era with an anniversary celebration. The new Doctor and the future of the show gets overshadowed by all the celebrations of the past. An easy way to avoid and combat that would have been to use Shooty Gatwa's 14th Doctor in a series at the start of 2023, allowing them to establish himself as the Doctor and also highlight the forward-looking direction of the new era. Then, at the end of the year, you overload on all the nostalgia and have a big fan service special celebrating the past. Instead, as it stands, by the time Gatwa takes over full-time, we'll have had four episodes in a row defined purely by nostalgic member berries and that's frankly too many. Doctor Who is meant to be all about moving forward and look into the future. It's part of the show's very DNA. It shouldn't fall into playing the greatest hits and allowing the past to overshadow the present and the future. And since I touched upon Disney's nostalgia obsession, I think it's time to bring up Doctor Who's recently announced co-production deal with the mouse. Now, there are a few things to unpack here. First, let's talk about what we do know. It was officially announced that Disney's streaming service Disney Plus now has streaming and distribution rights for Doctor Who outside of the UK. This is great for international audiences and will hopefully allow the show and the brand to grow in other markets, especially America, which has proven it can make or break a show internationally. It has also been announced that Disney will be contributing to the show's budget going forward, allowing the show to improve in scope and scale. But there's always a price when you make a deal with the mouse. It's not being confirmed by the BBC or Russell T Davis, but The Telegraph's Craig Simpson has reported that even though Davis still has full control as showrunner and the BBC still retain the IP, Disney now does supposedly have some level of creative input. Sure, Davis won't have to do anything they suggest, but the final financial contribution from Disney will potentially lead to a big problem going forward. A reminder that this is now purely speculation and a worst case scenario, but there is a potential situation in which Disney pretend to happily bankroll Doctor Who with the friendly assurance that they don't want creative control after all. You know, it's just your old pal Disney helping out with money problems. But then, that gives them financial leverage in negotiations. So after say a couple of years, they can use this investment to demand full creative control, because if they get denied, they can just threaten to back out entirely, leaving Bad Wolf and the BBC with a show they can't afford to make. And the BBC already struggles with its funding because of how much they're being squeezed by the UK government. So some executives might gladly accept a flat fee offer for the show's rights if Disney decides to open its massive wallet. The corporation has already shown its greed and hunger for a media monopoly time and time again, so I see no reason why Disney wouldn't want to gain control of one of the biggest media institutions of Britain. This co-production feels like making a deal with the devil, because of how easily Disney could exploit the partnership and turn it against the BBC for their own gain. I'm not a financial expert, I can't even do basic maths half the time, but Disney might even be able to sidestep the BBC entirely by potentially buying Bad Wolf from Sony, thus making Russell T Davis a Disney employee, allowing them to essentially hijack creative control if they wanted to do so. We can't overlook the fact that Disney splashed out a massive $71 billion to buy Fox, granting them the full rights to shows like The Simpsons and It's Always Sunny, movies like 28 Days Later, and franchise franchises like Ice Age. It's not even some far-fetched conspiracy theory to say Disney wants to control the world's media landscape, and something like Doctor Who is actually pretty small fry for the conglomerate. And to be honest, a show like Doctor Who is perfect for what Disney want to do, which is appeal to children, adults, and man-children at the exact same time. There are multiple ways for Disney to worm their way into gaining greater control over the property, because that door has been opened now, and in the shadows, the mouse is lurking, waiting to strike. 
I know how negative this video probably came across, but I really didn't mean it to be. I don't want Doctor Who to fail. I want it to succeed and last for countless more years. I want the second Russell T Davis era to do well. Just because I don't like these creative decisions doesn't mean I want to be vindicated as it crashes and burns. I would love to be proven wrong to doubt Davis, but right now I can't help but feel a gut feeling that the show's long-term prospects might suffer from all this nostalgic focus and reliance on familiar faces like Davis and Tennant. I really hope that Davis understands this risk and has accounted for these potential issues by weaving enough forward-facing stuff into his 60th anniversary specials, because Gower's success relies almost directly on his incarnation being given a strong platform to succeed. It's already obvious that Tennant's return will cause a huge influx of viewers. The biggest challenge is keeping them when he's gone. And with the way the era seems to be setting itself up, I'm not entirely confident that will happen. But like I said, I hope I'm wrong and that the era is a massive success, paving the way for future showrunners to reap the rewards and keep the show alive and thriving for decades to come. So, thank you for watching, even if you do hate me for this video. Hopefully you can prefer my usually more positive ones and see you next time. And I'd like to give an extra special thank you to my Asbantium level patron, Fallon Cortez, my Platinum level patron, Maximilian Foreman, and all my Gold level patrons, Calvin, Daniel Shilato, Franz Horn AK Line Vortex, Gog Nogler, Herna Verzog, and Luke Underscore SY. Thank you so much for your support.